So this is a rooftop unit, and what we're doing here, we are actually changing out the automated logic board for this particular unit. We were having some issues where the system wasn't reading the board correctly, and we had to drive out to this location to try and determine uh, based on our troubleshooting, we were able to determine what we believe was the fact that the board was damaged. Um, a, another technician had made mention of being on the rooftop at one time in the past, and they had discovered that the box that you see us placing this unit in had actually been left over. So when you know, if you know anything about electronics, moisture and water and wind and rain that stuff gets in here and it will actually damage this unit so what you see uh the tech doing here now he's actually removing these pins now this is the new board and believe it or not this particular board here you're looking at about eighteen hundred dollars close to two grand just for this board and i love controls you know they can be kind of difficult so as you can see it seems pretty easy like plug and play Basically, while he still has the other unit still connected, just to keep things simple, he's actually just pulling them off and placing them exactly where there were so there's no mix-ups. You know, some people will actually take a photograph, you know, with their phone or something in that nature. So if you look down at the bottom, you'll see two little red dots at the very bottom in the center. Um, this is what actually dictates, I'm trying to think of the best way to word it, almost the channel that you're on. So the way our system is set up, um, you have to turn the little knob to position number two or this board will not be able to pick up the uh, signals that it needs to for it to function properly. What I like about these logic boards um, are just how convenient they are, you know, how you can actually sign into the system and actually see if you got the correct CFMs, if you're... Uh, all your, your sensor switches, pressure switches, all these things are working correctly and will even alert you and give you an alarm where you can actually check and see if you're having issues with the unit. So if you're seeing what he's doing here is these little, uh, next to the little red buttons here, there's these little dip switches, correction, not dip switches, but these little jumpers, plastic jumpers. And what he's doing is he's matching up the jumper settings from the old board so that they match this new board so that uh, once we power the unit back up, everything will be functioning the way it was before we took the board off. And as you can see here, he's just uh, continuing to slide the um, clamps on. All right, there's that. Now, you see those real good? So right here, what he's doing, he's using some, using some needle nose pliers to grab these uh, little jumper, which are basically just little pieces of plastic that slide over uh, the particular jumpers. And again, like I said a moment ago, he's just matching them up so that when we power this unit up, everything will work correctly. Um, so once we power this unit up, back from uh, the main hub or from one of our computers, we will have to start to do a download of the software and the system to basically to connect this unit. Initially, when we'll power it up, it'll say ready. You'll see the little flashing light, and then it'll actually show an error message. And a lot of people get concerned because when they see the error, they think it's a problem. But really, it's just the system downloading the correct information in order to function properly. So I know it's a lot and you're not going to really learn a whole lot other than how to plug and play one of these units.